Welcome back to the exam room brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Happy New Year. This is all about a new year and a new you. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Chuck Carroll WLC. And uh, Dr. Barnard, you're on Twitter as well, aren't you? I am. We got lots of people following us on Twitter. I believe you're, you're Dr. at Dr. Neil Barnard. Pretty uh -oh, simple. Don't ask me that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no, that's it. I'm that. pretty, we're yes. we're going to put a link up to uh, to your Twitter account on uh, pcrm.org slash podcast. This way I have deniability. A absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, you also have that blue check mark by your name on there. One of these days, Twitter's going to give me that blue check mark. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, the health benefits of going vegan. I mean, we could talk about these for days and centuries even. Um, but as this is New Year, New You, and we are talking to people who are starting their vegan journey today, let's start with the basics, man. I mean, the big ones, weight loss. It's just, it came naturally for me as soon as I went plant-based. Yeah, it's, it's for many people the number one reason why they go to a vegan diet, uh, because weight loss is, is just practically automatic. And the beauty of it is it starts like right away. Now, you don't want to go for super fast weight loss. What you want to go for is permanent weight loss. Um, so it can take its time. Now, some people do lose weight really quickly, um, some more gradually. But can I maybe mention why? This yeah, abs absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because I got to tell you, Chuck, some people think, what are you talking about? How can I possibly lose weight? Because you're eating all those carbs. You're eating rice. Mm -hmm. You're eating potatoes. You're eating bread. You're eating spaghetti. And there's no limit. In, in the research studies we do, there's no limit on how much you're eating. And so people sometimes who, who have been dieting, they're afraid. But a couple things become clear soon. First of all, carbohydrates have only four cal... This will not be on the test. Uh, <laughs> car carbohydrates have only four calories per gram. Maybe it will be on the test. This is important. Uh, carbohydrates, whether it's from bread or pasta or rice, have only four calories in a gram, but fats have nine calories. So what if I throw out all that fatty meat and all that fatty cheese, that's nine calories per gram, I'm losing, and I'm eating rice instead, only four calories per gram in the carbs. Um, so suddenly we realized why people in Japan were always really skinny while they were eating rice right? and why they gained weight when McDonald's came in and put in burgers and, and cheese and so forth and, and they moved away from rice. So anyway, when you're on a plant-based diet, you're eating the healthy grains and beans and vegetables and fruits. You're not eating much fat. So it's, it's naturally low in calories. But there's two other things. Just real quick, uh, everything you're eating has fiber in it. Yeah vegetables and beans. Fiber has effectively no calories, but it fills you up. So you just push away from the table quicker. And the third thing, in research studies, we have been measuring people's calorie burning speed, their metabolism, and it actually increases a little bit on a vegan diet. And at some point, I'd love to share with you why that is. But your, your after meal calorie burn. Yeah. Uh, in a study that we published back a decade ago, we found that in, in people not worrying about how much they eat, they just go to a low-fat vegan diet, their after-meal calorie burn bumps up by about 16%. Is that the resting metabolic rate? Um, it's The resting metabolic rate is where you start, and then you have breakfast, and now it's your postprandial calorie burn or after-meal burn, and that's the one that goes up. And it'll go up for maybe three, four hours. You think, well, what good what good's that? You know, a three, three or four hours calorie burn it happens after every meal. Mm -hmm. So 16% is not a lot. But if I get a 16% advantage after breakfast, after lunch, after dinner, that can add up to some real weight loss over time. So a vegan diet, naturally modest in calories. It's got the fiber to turn off your appetite fairly promptly. Right. Um, and third, it gets your metabolism more back to like when you were 16 years old. Sure. And with weight loss, wow, 16, that's awesome. Uh, with, with the weight loss, obviously, comes a slew of other health benefits, you know, lower cholesterol, uh, lower blood pressure. We've heard uh, countless stories upstairs from the Barnard Medical Center, you know, e people even reversing type 2 diabetes. I mean, this yes. is this is just a, almost a cure-all. Yeah, well, I always encourage people, don't fire your doctor. If you've got diabetes, that's a serious condition. Sure. Same for high cholesterol, whatever. But run, do not walk to a vegan diet. Um, if a person has diabetes, particularly if you catch it early, you've got a good shot of getting rid of it completely. Um, if you've had diabetes for a longer period of time, you still want to go to a vegan diet. It'll improve. In some cases, it will go away. And most importantly, those complications of nerve pain or where your kidneys are attacked or your, or your eyes might be attacked, the likelihood of any of those things can be dramatically reduced mm -hmm. by a healthy diet and lifestyle. So um, 
do talk to your doctor about it. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. When people go on a vegan diet, their blood sugars start to go down and down and down and down. And if they're also on insulin, it can go down so low that you'll start to shake. You know, you you got, oh, wow. you got hypoglycemia. So um, I always encourage people to say to, to to speak with their doctor. Let them know they're doing this vegan diet, so the doctor can adjust their medications down when the time comes. But yeah, go for that. You know, don't go the rest of your life just thinking got diabetes. It's always going to be this way. Nothing I can do about it. I'm going to be on a sack full of medications forever. Maybe, but let's give you a shot at, at reducing that or maybe getting rid of it completely. So those are ailments that you have already, but as we know, nutrition is also big for preventative medicine. You know, just the benefits as far as like lowering the risk for chronic diseases. I mean, that is just staggering. But seen just more than a dozen links between food and cancer now, right? Well, Yes, um, and the st- statistics are, are frightening. Uh, a third of women get cancer at some point. Mm. Uh, breast cancer, uterine cancer, colorectal cancer. Uh, for men, same story, prostate cancer and others. Um, and you're not going to eliminate all of that, but a plant-based diet can, can hugely reduce the risk. So you throw out the cigarettes, you throw out the meat and the, the cheese and so forth, eat healthy things, and your risk of cancer goes way, way down. What about Alzheimer's? That, I got to tell you, Alzheimer's is, I think, the, 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 the new frontier. We used to think it was all old age and genetics. But in 1993, the Chicago Health and Aging Project started looking at diet and found that when you make certain diet changes, or, or when you follow certain diet patterns, I really should say, um, the risk of Alzheimer's is much lower. And it turns out that it's almost exactly like what's good for the heart more plant foods, mm-hmm. uh, getting away from the saturated fat that's in dairy and in meat and so forth. Um, these things seem to not just protect the heart, they also pre- seem to protect the brain. And one of the things that fascinates me is epigenetics. And Alzheimer's, unfortunately, is is very prominent in my family. And I'm, uh, I'll be flat out honest with you, I'm terrified of, of getting that when I'm older. So I'm trying to do everything in my power to you know lower that that risk but um that there is a strong link there between you know say twins you know one goes plant-based the other one doesn't one gets alzheimer's the other one doesn't there is a gene called the apoe epsilon for allele um you you get this gene from mom uh your risk of having alzheimer's has just been tripled Mm. if you got it from dad too so you got it from both sides of your family, your risk is 10 to 15 times higher than other people. Mm. So up until this point, neurologists have said, I can do your blood tests and I can tell you, and then it's just a question of getting old enough for this to hit. No, Um, genes are not destiny. And if you have those genes, but you follow a healthy lifestyle, those genes may never become active. And we learned about this actually, we learned about this with smoking. There are genes for lung cancer. Uh, there are there are genes that, that if you've got this gene, you're at a higher risk for lung cancer. What does the gene do? What the gene does is it makes it harder for your body to eliminate carcinogens. So you're a smoker, you inhale, the carcinogens go into your lungs, and you, genetically you can't get rid of the carcinogens, you get lung cancer. Somebody else who doesn't have that gene, they can get rid of the carcinogens more easily. But what's But what does that mean? Even if I got the gene, if I never smoked then the carcinogens aren't going into me. So who cares if I got the gene or not? Um, all the gene did was make it harder to, to clean myself out. Same with diabetes. There are genes for diabetes, but if I don't eat unhealthy foods and I lace up my sneakers every now and then, um, can I reduce my risk of diabetes? Absolutely. And that is also true for Alzheimer's. Researchers in Scandinavia looked at memory problems in older folks and those who were avoiding the bad fats, cheese, ice cream, meat, People who are generally avoiding them had about 80% reduced risk of memory problems compared to those who were digging into the big fats, even if they had the genes that should bring them there. I'm sure that's going to bring comfort to a a lot of people who are kind of in the same position I am, you know, just fearful. Well, we're right to be afraid. I mean, when you get Alzheimer's, you lose everything. Yeah. Um, And I have it in my family, too, and and that's true of, you know, lots of people. and if, this is why I wrote this book, Power Foods for the Brain, that we're going to talk about in a future episode, I hope. Yeah. Um, because there is so much that a person can do to move the needle in a healthier direction. Oh, 
Outstanding. Uh, I mean, we like I said at the top, I mean, we could just go on about this for days. I mean, there's just so many good health benefits that, that come with the plant-based diet. But the show must go on. So uh, we're going to hit a quick pause. We're going to come back, and uh, we're going to talk about why American foods are so addictive. That standard American diet. Stick around. You are listening to The Exam Room, brought to you by the Physicians Committee.